hours after laying eyes on these cars for the first time, we were hitting the road back to Georgia with over 1,500 miles to go in the dead of winter. The coupe hadn't seen the road in nearly a decade, and the wagon had spent the last 24 years languishing away in a Colorado junkyard. We had no idea what problems might present themselves as we hit the road. Nevertheless, we headed out into the great unknown to find out what adventures might meet us along the way. Sure, things were going to go wrong, but we were ready, or so we thought. So follow along as we try to drag two broken down AMCs all the way from Colorado back to Georgia. It's a good time. All right, guys, so we made it to what I think is Battlefield, Missouri. And this is Malachi at Kai's Toys on Instagram. And we were in his garage. This is the 1972 AMC Hornet Sportabout that has been being drugged across the country by the Tundra. I figure it's, it's time to shine. So we're gonna see if this thing's a runner. Fingers crossed, because that would be awesome if I get to drive this the rest of the trip instead of the coupe. So generally, if a vehicle's been sitting for a long time, you obviously want to check the fluids. Um, there is oil on the very tip of the dipstick, so there's that going for us. Just a little bit of oil, and it's nice and clean, so we might be in good shape there. I pulled the drive shaft out earlier, and the transmission fluid was beautifully red. You also want to take off the air cleaner and make sure there's no crap down inside the carburetor, because if you fire it up, and suck all that garbage into the engine, that's not gonna be good for anybody. Little two barrel carburetor. You see the choke has been closed this whole time, which is really good. And there's no crap on top of it. Like if this was really dirty, you'd be worried like mouses had made some nests and stuff. But this actually looks really nice. Like man, that's clean. That's phenomenal. Once you check a couple things, uh, you'll want to vacuum off the top of the engine <laughs> because you don't want anything to catch on fire, especially in somebody's garage. And then basically you're just going to go through your, your essentials. You're going to add coolant, see if there's any leaks. You're going to change the oil. Uh, brakes will come later if it runs. We'll see about that. Stop wins for losers. But uh, there's a very minimal checklist actually to get these cars running. But you don't want to fire it up after it's been sitting for 25 years without at least changing the oil. Like, that's the minimum to do. Just a bunch of things you would do if you were given a car tune-up. Just this tune-up has been 25 years in the making. The thing looks like it was really well taken care of. There's nothing really blatantly out of place. The only thing I'm concerned about is when I crawl underneath it, am I going to see freeze plugs in there or not? Because there's no coolant in the radiator, and this has been sitting in Colorado, where uh, it gets really, really cold. Right there. Which side is your plug? The oil plug. Uh, it's probably in the center. By the way, yes, this is a Harbor Freight Jack. Our favorite purveyor of Chinese goods. I'm just letting him do all the work. I should have come to Malachi's place to start this whole deal. So one of the fun parts about getting into these cars is that it's kind of like a treasure hunt. Like you're finding the history of this car as you dig into the layers. It's like a automotive archeology span or something. Hey, we know that guy. And look at this. It's a Green Hornet sticker. Already in the garage, so I'm with good people. There's a Sally's one back here, but it's undercover. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff. And this is uh, Rusty, who's a Ford guy, so we don't know if we could trust him yet. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see here, this car had power steering, air conditioning, power brakes, disc brakes. It's got sway bars on it. The thing is fully kitted out. Uh, the belt for the power steering and AC was literally laying up here on top of the engine. And uh, Rusty just found this pulley right here. Really barely spins. So there's a good chance that's why that belt is missing. But we don't need any of that stuff to drive this car, so no biggie. And one thing I just found that I'm really excited about, I'm probably not gonna hook up the power steering, but if I were to, look at that. I mean, it's pristine. Hard to believe this thing sat for 25 years. They're under the hood finding more and more stuff. I'm gonna climb under and start draining the oil and uh, see what that looks like. Cause that's gonna tell us a lot about the condition of this engine. If that oil looks good and it's not all sludgy, there's a good chance this thing will run. So this is my first time underneath this car other than pulling the drive shaft out in the junkyard. And everything looks pretty good. There's not any real rust on this car. And uh, while well, yes, it's all dirty from sitting in a junkyard, everything is so intact uh so 
there's the drain plug. I'm gonna pull that, drain the oil, and see what it looks like. Oh, that, that plug's pretty so easy. That's. So what does the back of the hubs look like? The the wheels were rusted a little bit to the hubs, but as a whole, oil looks pretty good coming out. It's uh, it's got a little bit of sludge in it, but it's separated like oil does when it sits for a long time. So we'll drain this, see what it looks like and uh, go from there. So you can see there, one thing I was worried about on this car is if the freeze plugs were missing, if they had popped out uh, due to freezing temperatures. But as far as I can tell, all the freeze plugs are still where they're supposed to be. Looks like they might have even been changed. They're dormant plugs. Interesting. Just crawled under the car. Uh, the oil's draining right now. Looked at the freeze plugs. Everything looks good. Like, it's remarkable how nice everything is under there. So uh, I'm becoming more and more optimistic. So now I'm probably gonna have my hopes crushed by something. Another thing we're obviously gonna take off is the oil filter. And uh, I got one that I think will work, but they were missing the one I wanted. So uh, this was just my best guess. Fingers crossed, right? We got this oil filter wrench. Gonna try to pull the oil filter off. There we go. Hang on, let me get the pan underneath it. There's some more oil. Black gold. Oh jeez, <laughs> that was really close. Is it stuck? Yeah. I can't pull it up, so. There we go. So uh, my best guess looks wrong. See that hole? It's a little bit smaller than that hole. All right. Another thing you want to do after you find out you have the wrong oil filter is look inside your distributor. And man, that actually looks really That's nice. A for the spider web. Yeah, but that's that'll get tossed around in there. It'll be fine. So uh, you have some points down here. I'm gonna run a little piece of sandpaper in between them, make sure uh, that they have a clean connection. But other than that, looks like everything's as it should be. It's even lubed up. So now that we uh, have established that I bought the wrong oil filter, meaning we're gonna have to run to Walmart. Before we do all that. We're going to hook up a battery and see if the electrical system on this car works. I've got the power! I think I'm being optimistic, thinking the electrical system would work. <laughs> It'll work. I'll even put it in. You don't need a bracket. You can, it'll just stay in there. Gravity. I mean, it... All right, so here's the moment where you connect the battery and look out for smoke. Pretty much. Ooh, your solenoid engaged. So I don't see any smoke. Nothing yet. It's still connected. So that's good. Do the lights work? Nothing. Oh, running lights! Really? Look at that. We got a sign of life. Both of them. That's crazy. And look at that. We got one tail light. That's pretty cool. Screwdriver. Solenoid. Oh yeah! She turns over. Sounds like it's got a little compression. All right, sorry about your screwdriver, Malachi. <laughs> You're fine. So now that we've established that the thing turns over, we need an oil filter before we can fire it up. So guess it, we're making a run. He got too small of a hole. Yeah, you, you need a bigger hole sometimes, you sometimes. know. Sometimes, it's life. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some sort of thread on this that's not exactly common, I guess. So I'm gonna have to wait for an auto parts store to open and get the right oil filter. It's not gonna run tonight, but we did get it to turn over. It's showing signs of life and everything that's on here looks really nice. So in theory, it should run, but you know, can't show that because I'm an idiot. But anyway, that's okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I think I slept three hours and I wake up to these guys putting an oil filter on the car. So they got the right oil filter this morning while I was off in La La Land. What you doing down here? Just put a little oil on the O-ring. We got the right oil filter! <laughs> what? I go to sleep for a few hours and everything is fixed, so why do I even stay awake and work on things? Boom! Well, uh, before we fill the engine up, I pulled the drain plug back off that I put on last night because I thought we were done. Uh, so we're going to run a quarter or two of oil through the engine and let's just let it drain out the back to wash any particulate that's settled in the bottom of the pan. You know, because I care. 
is a long four. Whoa, the fried burger. <laughs> <laughs> and filming at the same time, guys. This is now the Jacob Davis version. Not too shabby. Look at how clean that is coming out the bottom. Beautiful oil. So uh, I think it's safe to say it's pretty clean inside. Hey, what you doing? Well, well. Yeah, it needs to be cleaned off from sitting in the carpet. Definitely. Get out of the. No, that was good. Fail. Spilled a little. Here comes the good stuff. So you guys are probably wondering, why is he putting diesel oil in his car? That's not good. Well, diesel oil actually comes with a bunch of zinc in it, so it's cheap racing oil. <laughs> and I uh, obviously already have diesel oil that has zinc in it, but here's even more zinc. So you see that right there? ZDDP. That's the thing you want in your oil. It's really good for all the bearings and everything. Coats them in zinc. And look how thick this stuff is. It's like motor honey. When you don't know anything about an engine, you might as well make the oil thick. Uh, another thing you want to do on these cars uh, is file the points. You can take a little piece of sandpaper, fold it over on itself, and just run it between the two contact points. The There's the motion right there. Now we're talking. Do you see that? You can see where it got clean towards the end? So if that were there, you wouldn't be getting a nice clean spark. And when a car's been sitting for a while, you want every chance you can have of it running. So give it its best shot. I figure I should uh, have a key for this thing. And so I've been trying to bust the ignition lock apart, but I'm having no luck. So I'm just going to grind this little ridge down and it'll allow this whole assembly to turn inside of the column. And look at that key. Full ghetto spec. It's a little redneck, but in theory that should turn inside the column now. We'll find out. Well, doesn't seem to be doing anything. But, at least we have a key now. So we can't get into the gas tank. So we're just going to cut the gas cap off. I tried not to do that. There we go. <laughs> My dad's working on the ignition system. Meanwhile, we're about to check the fuel system. <laughs> Malachi's drunk already, even though he hasn't had anything to drink. And uh, rather than fixing the car, I've made myself a custom Rambler gas cap, complete with some workbench bench foam to space it. We're about to check for spark. So we're going to look from this plug wire to the master cylinder. And look, somebody's even labeled the plug wires. Oh, yeah. We got spark! So, something you can do when you have a fuel system that you don't know anything about, you can stuff a rag in the hole and an airline and pressurize the whole system and push fuel through the fuel line all the way to the front of the car. Good tip for you guys. Alright guys, now that we've got spark, we put some fuel in the carburetor, it's got oil in it. If everything's timing's right and the carburetor works it even a little bit, this thing should light off. And don't worry, we are prepared. Be ready to pull that wire off, remember? Yeah. In. And it's gonna make an awful ruckus, just so you know. Oh, I need safety glasses. It just spat dust and crap all over my face. Did you guys hear that? It's gonna run. So now I've got safety glasses because it just threw dust all over my face because that's what happens when a car sits in a junkyard for years. It gets covered in dust. Let's see what happens. We've been trying to run it off of gasoline. It's not catching, so we're gonna break out the starting fluid. A little more volatile, might let it run. Don't hear anything catastrophic in the engine right now, so this thing might be a runner. We'll see. A 
little cold in here. Fire this thing up, warm it up. All right. If it's stalled, throw some fuel. Look at that. She's idling on her own. But she's running off the bowls right now. So she's a runner. You. Dying. We just gotta make sure that it's gonna pull fuel from the some sort of gas tank, and uh, this thing should work. What? And by the way, for those watching after the fact, we're live streaming during it, so you missed out. Yeah. But for you, you guys are very loyal, and I appreciate it. All right, guys, did you see that? She's a runner, 304 AMC V8 with a two barrel carburetor. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is to try to get some brakes in this car. So we're pulling the master cylinder off that's full of crap, and we're going to throw a new one on and hope that that fixes it. Then we're going to drain the fuel tank, put some fuel filters in line, and uh, fill the cooling system, put the drive shaft back in, and see if we have drive and a cooling system and a charging system and all that good stuff. Yeah, that thing's seen better days. The back section looks, or front section looks pretty good. So I'm, ho I'm optimistic the front brakes will work regardless of if the back does. So we're using the car itself to bench bleed the master cylinder because we don't have a bench vise. So here we go. Short strokes. Not bad, just a little bitty bubbles left over. It's pulling some fluid still, it looks like. Most of those will uh, rise up to the top. So obviously an important part of taking a road trip is being able to stop. These are, I think, 10-inch brake drums in the rear, and it looks really good inside. Still a decent bit of life left. I mean, they're a little thin, but it'll do. How do you feel about it? Do brakes last. Safety, like, 98. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That looks awesome in there. I'm amazed by that. And your bearing is no play in it. The axle has no play in it back and forth. It's like brand new. That's really cool. What's really funny too is somebody apparently hit something pretty hard. Cause look at that poor shock. They bent the crap out of that bracket. But you know, who needs shocks? Okay. Vacuum bleeding the brakes. How does it look, Malachi? Not bad. There's a little turds in there, but they're not huge. A little turds okay. It's when you get a big one that it really and gives you trouble. You look, the pressure isn't extremely dropping, which means we actually have a pretty decent system. It's pulling air. We got air in the line. Harper Freight Special. 20 bucks. This side looks just as good. I mean, it's it's phenomenal how nice this is. I mean, that's a nice rear end right there, guys. <laughs> I think it's uh, not a limited slip, though. I like having other people work on my cars. By the way, you owe me a lot of work on the Rambler. <laughs> All right, deal. <laughs> What's going on? It's we're collapsing the hose. Like it's not pulling any fluid out. Apparently that you is clogged. A, uh, What's clogged? Micros. Um, tip is clogged. Maybe it's not sealing. It's not seating well. So it's leaking around it's the tight. set screw, not the bleeder yeah, valve. Correct. It's tight. It's leaking around. All right. The could be worse. Could. What are you doing, Jacob? So the bleeder screw wasn't seated well down here and it was clogged so it was actually leaking around the flare on the caliper but we just cleaned it out and in theory we should make a geyser right now well there we go yep got some through well i didn't mean to put it on malachi ceiling <laughs> but it works a whole lot of pressure <laughs> i think you're good sweet Yep. So we thought the radiator was empty, but we just went to add some water, and it only took about a quarter or two before it filled up to the top of the radiator. So it looked perfectly clear, but I just broke loose the pet cock, and it's very much so green. And look how nice that is. How crazy is that? It's not even rusted at all. That's amazing. This is an anomaly right here. He's filming me, filming him. How do you feel? It might be straight antifreeze. I've always run straight antifreeze. You get no corrosion with it. It doesn't uh, give you the same properties as half water and half antifreeze, but 
no corrosion. It's good stuff. As you can see, coolant still looks pretty good. So we're just gonna throw this back in the radiator and pretend like we didn't do any of this. <laughs> Got it! This is not a very uh, good it. container for this. Take two. I'm just glad that was coolant and not fuel. <laughs> I hit the, the top of the hood on accident. Well, that might clean off some of your patina. Alright, so we hooked up some aquarium siphoning equipment to our fuel system. And we're draining the old varnishy gas out. It doesn't look too bad, though. No, I mean, it, there's no dirt and crap in it. That's pretty cool. So we're going to drain the tank. And it looks like we might be able to run it off the tank. It's about that time. New master cylinders on. I uh, broke this uh, fitting, so I used some Gorilla Tape to fix that. Pretty good. Now we're going to use the fuel pump with the engine running to drain the rest of the bad gas out of the fuel line into this jug over here before we hook it up to the carburetor. And look at that. We're even gonna find out if the power steering works. Oh yeah, and that's the original coolant that was in this car. I think it's good to go. New fuel filter, we'll be able to see if it gets dirty. And uh, everything else seems to be falling into place. About to see if this thing has its gears. First, second, third, and even reverse. If I'm feeling lucky. You guys remember that uh, homicide underneath the car when I pulled the drive shaft out? Well yeah, I'm taking some preventative measures and topping off the transmission before we fire this thing up and actually try to put it in gear. So I'm gonna start with a quart and see how that goes. Don't say I don't care. Everything's pretty much buttoned up on the car. Brakes are done and bled. We got a fuel filter in the fuel line. We flushed the fuel and we're, we're still up off the ground with the car. So we're gonna run it through the gears and see if we have drive as well as reverse. Fingers crossed on that one. It's going well. He's rigging up some headlights over there because the headlight switch doesn't seem to be working, but that's no big deal. That's disappointing. Dead battery. All right, here we go. Start the car. Let's find out if we have gears. Fire's right up. Let's see. There's reverse. There's reverse. So reverse works. That's a good sign. I can drive home backwards if I need to. There's neutral. There's drive. There's first. Second. You guys see that? Runs like a top. What? It's gonna drive, guys. We're good. It runs and drives. Let's get it off the jacks. Let's find out if the charging system works. Is that charging? 13. What? The charging system even works! We're all in 13.30 basically. That's crazy! Look at that! Tail lights! Dash lights! And ghetto regged headlights. Yeah. We're gonna switch it. Pretty good, right? <laughs> Straight to the battery. It is apparently the coldest day of the year here in Battlefield, Missouri. We stayed an extra day and got this thing running and in theory driving. We'll see, we're gonna find out in a few minutes. But we're gonna go get dinner in it and uh, hopefully not die or get arrested or whatever else could happen. Cause anything could happen. It's gonna be interesting. Lights. Camera! Action.
there we go. First few feet driving this car under its own power. Got the alternator light on, but we checked it and it's charging, so no idea why that's there. But uh, I don't have any turn signals. There we go, first time out on a real road. <laughs> this is so sketchy. Oh, it's second gear. It's running and driving, guys. This is amazing. This car has been sitting for 25 years, and now it's on the road. And it really didn't take all that much effort. Even if we only drive this to dinner tonight, we still drove it. So uh, no idea with how it's running if I'm going to be able to drive it all the way to Georgia. But we'll see if she clears her throat once we get some good gasoline in it. But it's running. So that's pretty cool. Well, she's smoking a little bit, but that's to be expected. It's been sitting in a junkyard for uh, quite a few years. So, uh, burning off some crap. It's not perfect, but she got here. And look at that beautiful thing. A little octane boost. Formulated with jet fuel. Give it that extra kick. There's Malachi putting gas in his Rambler American. And there's me putting gas in my AMC Hornet wagon. Life is interesting right now. Almost didn't want to fire up there uh, after getting gas, but uh, it's running. Power steering works, power brakes work. Man, this is phenomenal. We're living in luxury. Brakes are dragging just a little, but uh, if I warp the rotors, uh, I really don't care that much because this is awesome. Alright guys, you see that right there? That's 65 miles an hour in a car that hasn't been on the road in a quarter of a century. That's just phenomenal. So, for those of you who think you can't go in a junkyard and find a good car, we spent literally a day on this thing. And it's running and driving, yet again. So awesome. Well, she made the drive to dinner, and then back from dinner on the freeway, we ran 65 miles an hour. Seems good. And just remember guys, it's not all glamor on these trips. We're outside in Battlefield, Missouri, swapping bumpers on the two Hornets so that we can tow the coupe behind the truck and drive the wagon. Hey everybody. It's two degrees outside. <laughs> Let's go swimming. <laughs> anyway, back to work. So uh, I'm making some changes on it to be able to drive it to Georgia. Think it'll make it? I don't know. There's one way to find out.